Before we jump in, we have our Christmas sale going right now, which is 50% off everything in our store and tryingdigital.com for the rest of December. So if you want a huge discount on filmmaker assets or just want to show support, check the link in the notes below. AI is everywhere right now. Everyone is talking about it, using it, posting their results. You have these things like Midjourney, where you can create original art through text prompts or something like Voice AI, where we can feed the system my voice and- It'll act as a guide for the all new voice like this one right here. But AI within our workflow as filmmakers is not new or limited to these obvious current trends. You may be using some right now without even knowing it. So today I wanted to look at some of my favorite AI tools for filmmakers. First here is Video AI from Topaz Labs, and it's insane. With this, you can denoise, deinterlace, or upscale. I used it last week to scale up a rip reel from Ryan Johnson. I could only find it in horrible 320 quality, so I brought it in here, and this software does its thing. You could see how insane the difference is here when I just swipe the before and after. Easily the best cleanup software I have ever used. Then we have the best new color software to come out in years, Color Lab AI. I've been using this this for around six months now, and I'll definitely do a full episode on this soon because it is amazing. But Color Lab is using AI to help match your footage, correct exposure, and so much more. You can either use it as a colorist assistant to very quickly and easily balance your footage, or you can create an entire look or build out a LUT to use elsewhere. You can import references here and let the software use that to create a look for your image, then get in and fine tune. Then we have all of Adobe's AI with Adobe Sensei. There's a ton of AI tools inside of Adobe products, but I'm just gonna point out a few that I use the most. First is Content Aware Fill. Of course, we know about this in Photoshop, but it's moved to After Effects is what I salivated over. With this, you were able to tell the system to remove an object from your scene, and it works like magic. We've shown this process on the show before, so I'll link that below. Then you have Roto Brush in here. We all know what that is, but a lot of people don't realize that it's AI making this possible. Then you have Scene, edit detection, which may be the thing we use the most. Like what you have in Resolve, you click a button and Premiere finds all the cut points in a single video file for you so you don't have to do it yourself. Then on the mind-blowing side of things, you have Remix. This one is a massive help for any editor. One thing that we are always doing is editing our music tracks to fit our edit. You need it longer, shorter, etc. And often you're making compromises with your cut somewhere to fit the perfect length of the song. But now you can use Remix. So you just click and hold on the Ripple Edit tool, then select Remix, and now all you need to do is drag the length that you need your song, and that's it, you have it. It does a shockingly good job, and you can continue to refine from there. Then there is Transcription and Caption. This is a new addition as of this year. You come up to this window, go to Text, then under Transcript, you click Create Transcription and let it do its thing, and that's it. It builds out a transcription of your piece for you. Now I can click Create Captions, and I have subtitles for my entire video. I rarely find issues, but when you do, you can come right in here and correct whatever you need. You also have other things like auto reframe, color match, and morph cut, but we don't use those as much. Moving on now to the Neural Engine in DaVinci Resolve, which just sounds cool, but the first one here is the Magic Mask. In Resolve, we jump over to the Edit or Color page. I'll do this in color. Then we add a node, come over to our mask, select object or person, use the plus dropper to select what we want to track, use the minus dropper to remove what we don't want to include, then hit track forward. And it's done and pretty close to perfect. So now I can make adjustments to just this section or do anything else that I'd like to the background or with comping something else in and it's just glorious. Then similarly, you have the depth map and it's exactly what it sounds like. Resolve will automatically create a depth map from your footage. All you need to do is drop on the effect and that's it. Takes a second to calculate and there it is. Now I can shift to fast mode here if I wanna watch this in real time, which is bonkers. But with this, I can create a depth of field effect or an atmosphere effect like haze or fog or do similar things as to what we did with Magic Mask with putting things behind the subject or selective corrections. You also have other things like surface tracker, speed warper, face refinement, and a ton more. I'll add some info to those in the notes below as well. 
And one of the reasons all of this is working so fast for me is because I'm doing all of this on my Precision 3650 that Dell was kind enough to send over. Inside of this system, I have two two terabyte SSDs, 11th generation Intel Xeon processor, 128 gigs of memory, and most importantly, an NVIDIA RTX A4500 GPU. This GPU is key for the AI work we are doing locally since we are able to leverage the third generation Tensor cores inside of the NVIDIA A4500. If you're like me, Tensor cores are pretty technical and somewhat confusing, but mainly for our purposes, they are specialized cores that help a ton with speeding up an AI process. And all of this is packed into the very small footprint of the Precision 3650. We're getting a ton of performance out of something that is half the size of the other systems in our studio. So we're getting impressive speed with solid scalability while being half the size and cost of some of the other systems that we have, which this thing has been faster than, so pretty impressive all around. But we do have this system here with the A4500, so I know it'll be able to handle these local data sets with something like a process from Stable Diffusion, which I'm gonna show you in a minute. For image operations, first we have Gigapixel AI from Topaz Labs again, and this is very similar to the other, but for images instead of video. You can scale your images and correct low quality with just a click. I've used this on most of my AI art since those come out small and I wanna scale them to at least 4K. And speaking of AI art, like I mentioned before, my personal go-to for text prompts is Midjourney. We did an entire episode on this, so I won't go deep into it here, but it just keeps getting better and better. The quality difference in just six months is really insane. And there are a ton of AI art creation apps that you could use at this point, but from all that I've tried, Midjourney is by far the best, unless you want to do something more custom with it. And that is where Stable Diffusion comes in. Stable Diffusion has a cloud version, just like Midjourney, where this isn't using your system to process these images, but you can also download software version and create the AI art on your actual system locally. The main reason for doing this is the ability to create your own data sets and have more control over what you're creating. So you could take a bunch of images of yourself or someone else, then train Stable Diffusion on that, then use it as a starting point to create what you want. Quarter Digital actually showed this in one of their episodes with pretty great results. But again, you're not gonna be able to do this locally without a solid system that can keep up with it. And again, I'm on the Dell Precision 3650 with the RTX A4500, which is great for large models, renders, and data sets. So keep that in mind if you wanna try this out for yourself. Another thing the RTX A4500 500 is helping me with is EB Synth. This one is a ton of fun. Here I can take a single image from a video, alter it to my liking, maybe make Josh a bit of a zombie for instance. Then I can take this one frame to use as a reference, then feed EB Synth the rest of the frames from the video and let it process. In the end, it's gonna take that one frame and fit it over all of the other frames from the clip until we have something like this. And people have done all kinds of great stuff with this, including animation looks or creating a creature. You can see how far this thing Thing could go in the future. But staying with images, another great AI tool that's a bit more on the practical side is Kive AI. I pitch a lot of projects and when I'm pitching a feature, I collect a ridiculous amount of images for references to use to build out that pitch. It gets cluttered quickly, hard to find things, but with this, you can drag and drop your folder of images and the AI will scan them all and organize it for you to make everything easier to find, tagging it automatically with metadata. You can also feed it video and it'll pull frames from every Every shot for you and add that to your library. It also feeds you images that you may like so you can find new references and it gives you the ability to search, collaborate, or create project boards right here in the app. But the best part is that now I can come up here to the search after loading my images. I'll type woman scared and it does a great job of finding all the images that may fit that term. First up here is Isotope Neutron. This app uses AI to help you master your sound better than most of us can do on our own, unless you're an audio professional. In that instance, I trust your ears more. But just for a quick fix, a starting point, or for those who don't have the knowledge enough to process audio, this is pretty killer. On the more fun end of things, you have Voice AI, which I mentioned before. You can start using this for free and you get a good amount of credits to start grabbing voices that you might want to use. Then you feed it the audio like this here, 
there and it'll use your voice as a guide to make it something else entirely. They have everything from celebrity voices to more straightforward things. There are better apps for this like Altered Studio, but they can be pretty pricey. But that's it for today. Some of my favorite AI apps for filmmakers with a few extra honorable mentions in the notes below. You'll also find links to find out more about our Dell Precision 3650 and the RTX A4500. And of course, links to everything else that we talked about will all be in the notes below. But until next time, don't forget to write, shoot, edit, repeat.